Turks have been claiming for, well, in some cases for centuries. This is the Topkapi manuscript. It's there in uh, Istanbul. According to Altikulic and Isanulu, this is a mid-8th century manuscript, not a mid-7th century. So it's about uh, anywhere from 60 to 100 years after Uthman. It's not from the 7th century. What's more, it's not complete. It has 2,270 manuscript variants. That means words or phrases in this manuscript that do not agree with the Kyrene text that Shabir just referred to, the 1924 Kyrene text. So you've got a problem there. This cannot be Uthmanic. It's from the wrong century. It's much too late. Altikulic also looked at the Sana manuscript. Now, the Sana manuscript has been really exciting because it's just been discovered recently, and there have been enormous amount of interest that has been applied to it. This manuscript here, it, there are a number of folios, and some are written by different hands. This one they date would be the earliest manuscript they would date. And they would say that the underscript, now, what am I saying here? The palimpsest. Uh, if you look carefully, I don't know if you can see from where you are, but there is a writing underneath the overscript. There's an underscript, an inferior text, and an overscript, which is the superior text. The inferior text, they would have dated to the last two decades of the 7th century. That's the time of Abd al-Malik, the caliph, who ruled from 685 to 705. The oh, superior text, the one that you can read, that is dated from the early 8th century, is what they were saying. But they're claiming very clearly that this also has manuscript variants. The Husseini they would put, it's known as the Husseini manuscript, which is there in Cairo. It is a, uh, a uh, majuscule. It uses much larger prints. It is written on a completely different style. And it is dated to the mid-8th century. Doroche actually puts it back to the 9th century. So this cannot be 7th century. Dr. François de Roche is the man that is responsible for most of the dating of the Petropolitanists. Let me just say something about François de Roche. I know an awful lot of Muslims do not like him because he's a Westerner. By the fact that he's French, they don't like him even, they like him even worse. <laughs> Nothing against the French. But let me just say what your scholar, your supervisor, Dr. Walid Saleh, says about François de Roche. This is the man you got your doctorate from. He says... François de Roche is now the giant jar whose handles we, the not-so-tall, are all trying to reach. If you are going to revise the outline of early Islamic history, you had better fit your story into the timeline supplied now by de Roche, for the manuscripts brought to light by de Roche are not easily dismissed. The work of de Roche is such that it has changed the manner of doing Quranic studies by making the studies of codices the center of our research in the, on the Quran. De Roche has brought Quranic studies to a level, ne level never before seen in Anglo-American scholarship. Now, um, you may not like that quote, but then you're going to have to deal with your own supervisor. I'll let you talk to him later on today. What has he said and what does he know now about this manuscript, these set of manuscripts? He's saying that they are come from the third quarter of the first century, so you're talking about the early to mid-eighth century. They are written by five different copyists. They do not completely correspond to its state when it was completed. There were corrections that were made later on. When comparing with the Cairo edition, the 1924 edition, they have many words turn out to be different in different way. They're written in a scripted defective. The manuscript disagrees with the Cairo canonical system in 93 places. Later hands modified this verse markers through erasures and additions. It looked like they put these manuscripts together because they needed a quick production of the Quran. That was his conclusion. And then when we get to Ma'al Quran that you're talking about, that you're referring to, that is exactly the same as our 1924 edition. It only goes up to Surah 43. I don't know if you knew that. There's 114 surahs in the Quran. It's not even, it only contains 53% of the Quran. So how could it be exactly the same as our Quran? It has erasures. It has corrections. We'll talk more about that later. And then the man, the one that you claim is exactly like our Quran today. This one gets off the worse. This one also only goes up to Surah 43. It's not complete. What's more, it's full of errors. Errors were made not by the scribe, namely they were existed in the, uh, that existed in the original, uh, original text. It is neither one of the Caliph Uthman's copies. It is dated to the, in his case, mid-8th century, not even the early 8th century. And there are six reasons why there are problems with it. It has no discipline of spelling. It has different ways of writing the same word. There are scribal mistakes, copyist mistakes, written by a scribe who had no writing experience, and later added signs after verses. The Tashkent Musaf was neither the Imam Musaf of Caliph Uthman was reading 
nor was it those by the, when, when he was martyred, nor any of the Musafs that he sent to various centers, nor even a copy that was kept in Medina for the benefit of the people. 4,000, 172 ayats it contains, or really almost two-thirds of the Tashkat Man Musaf has now been lost. So, we're going to just show you one after another. When we look at the palimpsest, as I mentioned earlier, the underscript, probably the best work that's been done on the palimpsest coming out of Sana. If I can put up a uh, picture of it, here it is right here. You can see the underscript. Those of you who are at the fr uh, front benches can see it. God bless you for coming to the front. When you look at the underscript, you will see it does not agree with the overscript. When they put it under ultraviolet light, they have now found it's actually two different scripts, showing that there's an evolution between the last two decades of the 7th century and the first two decades of the 8th century. There's an evolution in those 10 to 20 years. According to Sadege in Gudarzi, it is clearly this falls outside of the standard type text and is from a different textual edition completely. Dr. Elizabeth Quinn, who's doing probably the standard work and probably doing the most original work on the palimpsest, her conclusion, it's a completely a different Quran, not the Quran that we have today. Bonham and Fogg's palimpsest. When you look at Bottom and Pav's Falasus, you can find it has omissions, different words, word sequences, orthographical variants, reading errors, and corrections. Certainly, this is not a complete text. So every one that we've looked at, the six major manuscripts, every one of them so far has been found to be fraudulent.